Hi, University of Wakajuku students. This is Dr. Andres, and I wanted to share with you the books I'm currently reading. What is the Grass? Walt Whitman in My Life by American poet Mark Doty, and Forest Bathing, How Trees Can Help You Find Health and Happiness by Dr. Queen Lee. This is about how in Japan they believe in the curative power of the forest. And she takes a stand, 16 Fearless Activists Who Have Changed the World by Michael Elson Ross. And I'm going to share with you um, uh, one track from a CD of an author um, reading about the power of her love of books. So um, we're going to listen. Oh, this was very inspiring, and I wanted to share this with you. Chapter 8, Benny Silva, Augustine, Louisiana, 1987. The books keep me going. I dream of those books hidden away at Goswood Grove, of tall mahogany shelves with volumes upon volumes of literary treasures, and ladders reaching to the sky. For several days in a row, when I come home from school feeling discouraged by my lack of progress with the kids, I put on my duck shoes and make the trek down the farm levee lane, slip through the crepe myrtles, and follow the moss-carpeted paths of the old garden. I stand on the porch like a kid before the Macy's display window at Christmas and fantasize about what might be possible if I could get my hands on those books. Lauren Isley, who was the subject of one of my favorite term papers, wrote, If there is magic in this world, it is contained in water. But I have always known that if there is magic in this world, it is contained in books. I need magic. I need a miracle, a superpower. In almost two weeks, I have taught these kids nothing but how to bum cheap snack cakes and sleep in class and that I will physically bar the door if they try to leave before the bell rings. So don't try it. Now they skip my class altogether. I don't know where they are, just that they're not in my room. My unexcused absence reports sit unbothered on a massive stack of similar pink slips in the office. Principal Pivoto's grand plan to turn this school around is in danger of falling victim to the way things have always been. He is like the overburdened character in Eisley's often printed story, throwing beached starfish back into the ocean one by one, while the tide continually deposits more along an endless and merciless shore. With most of the classroom books now missing, I have resorted to reading aloud from Animal Farm Daily. This to high school kids who should be reading for themselves. They don't mind. A few even listen peeking surreptitiously from the battery of folded arms, drooped heads, and closed eyes. Lejuna is not among my audience. After our hopeful encounter at the Cluck and Oink, she's been absent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now Thursday. I'm disappointed in a soul-crushing sort of way. Across the hall, a substitute teacher screams incessantly during my readings as she attempts to control science room chaos. The science teacher, who started the year with me, has already given up and claimed she had to move home because of a flare-up in her mother's lupus. She's gone. Just like that. I keep telling myself I will not quit. Period. I will gain access to that library at Goswood Grove. Maybe I'm expecting too much, but I can't help believing that, for kids who are given so few choices on a daily basis, just having some could be huge. Beyond that, I want them to see that there is no faster way to change your circumstance than to open a great book. Books were the escape hatch that carried me away during long, lonely times when my mother was gone. During the years I grew up wondering why my father didn't want much to do with me, and the times I landed in schools where, with my wild black curls and olive-toned skin, I looked different from everyone else, and kids curiously inquired, what are you, anyway? 
Books made me believe that smart girls who didn't necessarily fit in with the popular crowd could be the ones to solve mysteries, rescue people in distress, ferret out international criminals, fly spaceships to distant planets, take up arms and fight battles. Books showed me that not all fathers understand their daughters, or even seek to, but that people can turn out okay despite that. Books made me feel beautiful when I wasn't, capable when I couldn't be. Books built my identity. I want that for my students, for those lonely, hollow faces and unsmiling mouths and dulled, discouraged eyes that stare at me from the desks day after day. So I hope that you are inspired by this, um, the power of books, right, to inspire, to comfort, and I challenge you to read. Warm greetings to you all. Bye-bye.